All right, Fishaholic, so welcome back to another episode. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And if you enjoy in the end, please uh, smash the like button, hit that subscribe button, stay tuned for more vids. And what we got going on today is uh, I'm out on the river uh, in the kayak, as you can see. And uh, we're already probably about a mile and a half upriver from where I launched. And uh, we're gonna keep heading upriver, probably another like mile, mile and a half. And uh, by the time we get up there, it's probably gonna be like the tail end of the incoming tide or uh, the start of the outgoing. And uh, I'm really hoping that the outgoing uh, turns on some snook, jacker ball, and tarpon in this area. And uh, we're gonna probably fish uh, the outgoing all the way back to the launch and uh, into this evening or dusk. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, and also, by the way, as you notice, I'm not wearing a life jacket and uh, it completely slipped my mind and I completely forgot it. And I forgot it just right in my truck too, which I, I don't know how I did that, but I just was not thinking. I, I was uh, thinking more about the fishing today and how I was gonna just plan my attack. And uh, this whole past week, I did a lot of surf fishing, so I didn't leave my life jacket. So uh, it just like slipped my mind, but uh, don't be like me, make a list or just always remember your uh, life jacket. Uh, but luckily, uh, yeah, I fished here many times, so it's kind of just like another day at the office. And it's also a beautiful day, as you can see, it's really calm and we're also gonna be fishing really close to shore. And uh, I'm a pretty good swimmer. I used to do a lot of free diving and, and stuff like that and spear fishing. So, uh, you know, if, if we flip and I have to swim, you know, 50 yards, that's nothing. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, also a huge shout out to Tide Chasers for sponsoring this video and hooking me up with this really nice uh, long sleeve tee. And I love these cuffs on it uh, to protect uh, the tops of my hand from the sun and also this hood so I can protect uh, my ears and my neck from the sun. And also I got my buff on so I can, you know, really cover up uh, to uh, prevent the best we can from me getting uh, skin cancer. But unfortunately, it's probably gonna happen anyway because of all the time I spend out on the water. And I also put on SPF 70, this stuff I find to be the best. And also this waterproof hat from Tide Chasers is pretty cool. So if uh, you wanna check out uh, any of these apparel items or some of the other stuff they have, uh, like their rain jacket or bibs or uh, other graphic tees, I will uh, put a link down in the description as well as a code so you can save at checkout. And a huge shout out to Tide Chasers for uh, supporting my channel and for each and every one of you guys for supporting the channel just by uh, clicking on the video and watching. So anyway, let's uh, keep our workout going up river and uh, we'll just uh, start it off and see what happens. So stay tuned. All right, made it up river to this bridge and uh, it actually looks like we still have some uh, incoming tide, which is okay. I'm gonna start out by casting around this little hyperelastic uh, swim bait on a three quarter ounce jig head. All right, let's see if we can uh, get a bite. I'm just gonna get this to the bottom and uh, hop it along. And uh, if you can hear that like loud uh, engine noise, that's just like some machinery that's working on uh, a dock nearby. So I'm just gonna kind of Put up with it for a little while if uh we don't uh, catch any fish here in like 30 minutes or 45 minutes then uh i'll probably leave there's a fish wow little baby jack Creval on our first cast i've been catching a ton of these guys from the surf it's almost just been like a nuisance and i'm hoping we can get uh some really big jack curveball today, like 20 plus pounds. a little bit bigger one all right well evidently there's a lot of jacks here but hopefully we can find at least one decent snook off this bridge oh just marked a bunch of decent fish suspending right here underneath me There 
is. I think I found a, a bigger jack or a snook. He had me on the structure for a second. I was able to pull him out. He's kind of fighting like a snook. Oh, it's a monster snook. Giant snook. Wow, we got lucky. This one didn't uh, break us off in the structure. playing this fish real light right now because although we're away from the structure she can still pull hard enough to just cut the 50 pound leader so I just got to tie her out and bring her to the kayak get her on the fish grippers got her look at that stud snook just got a little mark on her gill plate there. Oh my gosh. She almost swallowed this swim bait. I can't believe how deep it is. I don't know if I can even get the pliers down in there. So I'm just going to try and pop it out with my hand. Got it. Ridiculous. Now let's get a quick measure on her. Right there is zero. That's 35. She's like a solid inch over 35. So a nice uh, healthy 36 incher. I'm going to bring her back up to the structure now. So uh, she doesn't get uh, preyed on. And uh, we'll try and get back down there and see if we can get another. Down she goes. Sweet. Let's check out the damage on my leader here. Oh man, she frayed it up good, but believe it or not, it's actually uh, still pretty strong. I could have played her a little harder, but I've had a uh, fish like that slice right through 50. Let's uh, chop this leader up and uh, put on a fresh one. Probably try this swim bait again and uh, just keep it going. All right, I'm gonna try putting 60 pound leader on because uh, I'm just a little worried if we keep fishing this bridge and just so happen to hook into something like 40 plus inches we uh, are going to be way outgunned and sorry for that annoying noise they're really trying to pound those pilings in uh, deep and uh, yeah i'm just going to attach uh, my leader with uh, a uh, albright knot and i'm probably going to do about like 20 to 30 wraps with the braid and when i get to the end where this loop is with my leader i like to loop back twice through with uh, the braid before cinching it down. Oh, just mark some fish right there. They look like smaller size snook. Come on, come on. Oh my gosh, just got hammered right there. I 
I believe this is another jack. Turn in the kayak. Look at that. Yeah, a little bit bigger one. They're really loving the hyperlastic today. Sweet. Oh, no way. We found a flounder. Sweet. It's definitely a keeper. I have to see if uh, flounder season is even open. If it is, I'll probably throw them in the cooler. All right, let's see here. Closed annually from October 15th through November 30th. They gotta be 14 inches to keep. This is easily 14 inches. And uh, I think today is literally October 14th. So I think we gotta throw them in the box because it's the day before the season closes. So let's uh, bleed them and uh, put them in the cooler. And for anyone doubting that this fish is not 14 inches, right here is uh, 30 and right there is 15. And as you can see, this fish is at least like three, four inches past 15. So this is probably like a 19 inch flounder, I would say. So I don't have any ice, but these ice packs are like rock hard right now because uh, we haven't really been out here long. So it should keep this flounder plenty cool enough until uh, we get home or uh, back to the launch to flay them up. Sweet. All right, well, we fished for probably about an hour uh, into the outgoing tide, and unfortunately, it was not nearly as good as the end of the incoming tide. And uh, I'm sure we could hang out at the bridge and wait for some more fish to stage, uh, kind of like how they were staging on the outgoing, but uh, I don't want to waste any more time there because uh, it's a little after 4.30. The sun uh, sets at seven, and uh, I'm thinking we could just go down river and uh, find another uh, scenario of feeding fish. And uh, I'm gonna just kind of work along the shoreline here, hitting some docks and uh, some mangroves and uh, sea walls or casting a big popper out into the channel and uh, maybe get some snook or jack or vol. And uh, we'll probably see some tarpon, but uh, the unfortunate thing is I haven't seen really any signs of mullet since uh, I launched the kayak. So I think without live mullet, it's gonna to be tough to uh, catch uh, the tarpon. Uh, we might be able to get a bite on say like a, a big topwater plug, but uh, landing them is gonna be another thing. Probably not gonna be able to land them. Uh, or even if we do, like it's just gonna be a nightmare, especially if it has like two trebles in his face because the tarpon just don't, won't sit still. But uh, yeah, let's just keep bouncing around and uh, hopefully we uh, find some more feeding fish. All right, so to start, I kind of want to just toss around this big uh, custom Wonder Bread uh, pencil popper and uh, see if we could get something big in the channel to blow up on this. All right, nothing on the pencil. I took like two dozen casts with it. I'd love to get one on it though, so we're gonna definitely try throwing it again. But I just wanna hit this little mangrove patch. Oh, 
Oh, there was one. Small one. Oh, there he is. Nice. The snook are fired up today. All right. There he is. All right. Not a bad one. All right, I cut across uh, the channel and right here there's like a big flat right in front of me. So I'm going to try working this plug uh, across the flat and then off the edge into like slightly deeper water. And hopefully something big will be sitting right there on the edge or on the flat. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, that was epic! Oh, got a fish on me. Got a fish on me. Oh my gosh, look at that! Look at that! Oh my gosh, right there! Oh, <laughs> that was insane! It's not that big actually, but uh, I'm also using a relatively heavy setup for these fish because I don't want to be spending a long time to try and land them because uh, if we spend a long time trying to land one, then that's less fish that we're you know, going to be able to catch as a whole. So I'm using 80 pound fluorocarbon leader. I've got 60 pound braid. And uh, this is uh, my 10,000 uh, Shimano Sargosa. Uh, looks like this guy's only about uh, 10, 12 pounds. See ya. All right, let's keep it going. Hopefully we can get like a 30, 40, or 50 pound Jack Creval now. And uh, also the rod that I'm using is the Dark Matter Tuna Pop and Stick. Uh, yeah, I'm actually using basically like a tuna setup because uh, I don't want to be outgunned if we uh, hook into something really big. And uh, generally I'm using this up north, uh, you know, popping for school bluefin or school yellowfin tuna. So we should have the proper tool right now to land a bigger Jack Creval in a decent amount of time. Uh, the green rod that I was using earlier, uh, I, I hooked a 46 uh, inch jack on that and landed it in the kayak, but it took me like 20, 30 minutes to land it because uh, it, that, that rod was just not strong enough to lift his head until that fish uh, tired out. And I was only in like seven uh, to like 10 feet of water when uh, I caught that 46 incher. Oh gosh. Ah, it's another smaller one. All right, came back up current for another drift. And uh, it really seems like most of these fish are hanging on the flat because uh, once I get out into the deeper water off the edge, I uh, stop getting bites. Oh God, big fish just tried to eat it. He might still be on it. Oh, he's still on it. He's still on it. He's still on it. He's still on it. Come on. Come on. Come on. He was right on it. There he is. There we go. All right. Sick. This one might be a little bigger. Ah, he's still kind of small. Dang it.
fun, really fun. All right, I'm gonna switch back to the Yozuri Hydra Pencil uh, because uh, we drifted down by this point and uh, it didn't seem like we were gonna get any bigger jacks uh, at that last spot. And uh, I think we might have a shot at getting a snook off this point. And I also did see some tarpon roll a little over that way, which was kind of cool, but uh, they did not take a sw uh, swipe at my pl uh, pencil popper at all. So I'm gonna just keep uh, moving down river and uh, there's another flat that could have some bigger jack crawl on it. Looks like a nice uh, snook sitting right off this point. Oh God, that was a juvenile tarpon. That just came up and hit this. All right, super fun day. And uh, I think we're gonna wrap things up. Uh, I fished a little bit longer after we had that tarpon hit the hydro pencil. I uh, hit that same point uh, with a swim bait, uh, the same one that we were fishing the bridge with and didn't have any bites. And then I moved a little bit further down river and uh, continued to throw the Wonder Bread pencil. And I uh, was hoping for one more Jack of all bite uh, on this flat that I was fishing because it looked so good, but uh, unfortunately no other bites. So uh, now that I'm starting to think about the fresh flounder having the cooler and uh, we're almost uh, back to the launch, uh, I'm starting to get hungry. Uh, I'm gonna head on out of here. And uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, it would really make my day if you smash the like button, subscribe to uh, stay tuned for more. It, you know, it's free, so you don't have to worry about anything. And uh, the only thing you'll get is like a notification um, when a another video is uploaded, uh, you know, when you subscribe. So hopefully I'll see you in the next video. And uh, like always, live to fish, fish to live.